Hey guys, what's going on? Eddie here with Blue Line Pressure Washing. Today is Tuesday, January 31st, and today we're going to talk about, get the right hand here, four keys to starting a pressure washing business and being successful at it. Uh, so before we get into it, if you would hit that uh, like button, hit the subscribe, notification bell if you would, throw us a comment on the video, help the channel out, helps us rank up a little bit better, helps more people get our content, and gives us uh, gives us some idea that we're at least trying to help some of you guys out. So if you would just uh, do those things for us, hit that like and subscribe button, and then leave us a comment, even if you're just saying hello, we appreciate it. So we're gonna get into it. Four keys that, uh, of my opinion, of starting a successful pressure washing business. I've got my list here otherwise I'll just go off on a rant and a tangent so number one not in any particular order uh, number one mindset um, start a business legally you've got business licenses permits insurance other things depending on where you're at in the city or state that you're in you have your requirements that you want to meet you have to form you know if you want to do an LLC you have some other requirements filings but that's kind of the legal stuff to starting a business. But your mindset is going to be key. Um, part of those keys, you're going to have people in your life that are going to be double Debbie Downers. You're going to have those negative people who are just going to be in your ear talking all kinds of negativity about how hard it is to start a business or how they think it's a bad idea, how they don't see a market for it. They don't see this reason or that reason, and that's fine. That's for them. That's a them problem. You have got to be in the mindset that you're going to be successful. You have to make up your mind before you start your business, before you open your doors, before you spray your first gallon of water through your machines. You have to decide, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to be successful about it. That's the proper mindset to go into starting a business and Understand, being an entrepreneur is not for everyone. Not everybody that you know is going to jump on the bandwagon because it's not for them. They're not of an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, that's a mouthful to try to get out. They're not of that mindset, and so they're not going to be the kind of person who would go out here and do what you're doing and start a business. Uh, they're not ready for that financial uh, freedom and also the not just the freedom but the responsibility that comes on the back end of learning your business growing your business and doing the right things with it some people just aren't built that way uh, if we were there would be no companies it would be nothing but owner operators throughout the entire country so you're unique have that mindset you're already a winner if you're willing to go out here and give it a shot Budget allocation, and this is a big one. Proper budget allocation. I see so many guys that want to go out and buy um, a $200 pressure washer and start doing jobs, and if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. I'm not here to put anybody down, <clears throat> and I'm not here to to give you a hard time about how you're doing it. I'm here to try to, to give you some help, helpful tips and pointers, this hat. I did not realize how bad this hat was until I'm seeing it on the camera. Anyway, um, budget allocation. And I, guys, you know, I sell equipment. We sell the Blue Line uh, 12 volt max, the Blue Line gas max skids. Uh, we sell the single blend elite uh, pressure washing skid with soft wash and the trailers, manifolds. We sell that stuff. We make money when guys like you decide that you want to buy our equipment so I'm telling you this budget allocation thing and it's not gonna help my business at, at all for me to tell you this but it will help you guys and it may help my business because you may decide to do some of the things that I tell you to do it may not but you take the information and run with it you wanna your three biggest things for your startup budget allocation is customer acquisition cost equipment cost overhead expenses so your overhead expenses as a startup you're going to be looking at the licensing fees through your state or through your city however you have to do it you're going to be looking at your 
insurance cost, um, any type of marketing materials that you want to uh, come up with, or anything like that. Website, you know, that kind of general startup. You get your website that either whether you're doing it yourself or you're paying somebody else to do it. There's all kinds of little things, but they'll nickel and dime you to death if you don't budget for them and allocate your your budget towards it. Your customer acquisition. As a new guy, you should be out uh, meeting people, shaking hands. We'll get into more of that in, in a minute, but you want to be out there in your market talking to people. Create that Google My Business page or Google listing, whatever they're calling it now. I don't think they're calling it GMB anymore. Um, but create that. Create your Facebook page, your you know your free business Facebook page. Start posting. Invite everybody that you know. Invite them to like your page. Get that kind of brand recognition out there. But your customer allocation cost and the marketing materials that you're going to purchase that needs to be in your startup budget. And then your equipment cost. So you got your three big ones. Your equipment cost. Do you go with that two hundred dollar pressure washer from? Home Depot or Lowe's and hope that it lasts more than four or five jobs so that you can buy a bigger and a better one and that's kind of how I did my business I started with low-end stuff and I used it until I had enough money to buy something else that was a little better and then I just kept doing that step program and stepping through it looking back I would have probably done some things differently but what I did obviously works because I'm here today to talk to you about it so if that's the way you want to do it or that's the only way that you can do it, then do it that way. Other options for a budget allocation are you have, say you have $10,000 and that's what your startup budget is and you want to buy a soft wash skid. Well, that $10,000 is probably going to get eaten mostly, if not all, by buying a rig from whether it be me or any of the other reputable uh, rig builders and manufacturers uh, around the country. So that $10,000 is gone. You have nothing to allocate your or, or to put into your uh, customer acquisition and your overhead cost. That's a problem. One way to alleviate that if you want the bigger equipment, if you want to start with the, the nice professional rig, you can do the finance route like click lease. Um, or I think there's some afterpay. There's there's several of them out there. I don't know what they all are. We use ClickLease. We're happy with them. They do good for us, and uh, they're a good tool to have, to have for you guys to be able to leverage your buying power. You leverage ClickLease if you're paying a couple of hundred bucks a month for your equipment. Check with your CPA because it's ultimately up to them as well, and your um, you know, using that equipment payment as a tax write-off at the end of the year, if you're paying a couple hundred bucks a month, then you still have $9,800 left of your startup budget to kind of get to that customer acquisition and the other stuff. The equipment is no good without the customers. The customers are no good without the equipment. So you need to kind of balance it out. Leveraging financing is not a bad thing. You hear a lot of guys say, don't ever go into debt, don't ever go into debt. Normally, I would tell you not to go into debt, but if you do it properly, leverage things properly to your benefit, you you have the tax write-off. There's no early payoff from ClickLease, so if you decide to start up and, and leverage them at first, and then you just want to pay it off so that you're not paying all that interest, you can do that. But just make sure you have the capital to do it and allocate your funds properly. Uh, read Profit First. If you take nothing else away from this video, read the book Profit First and apply its systems to your business. Um, number three, get out of your comfort zone. So that's going to be a big one for a lot of people. A lot of guys, especially in the service industry, we're good with our hands, right? We can go out and do certain things with you know, working in our business. We can go out and wash houses all day long. But we're uncomfortable speaking in front of groups of people. We're uncomfortable going, you know, into a realtor's office, into a uh, broker's office, and just talking to them and saying, "Hey, my name is Eddie Chrisman. I own Blue Line Pressure Washing LLC here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. 
and I would like to talk to you about uh, you know leveraging our services for your clients that's very uncomfortable for people you gotta go out and do it you're not gonna meet and network with the people that you need to meet and network with if you're sitting at home and waiting for them to come yeah they might eventually come but if you're sitting at home and just putting posts up left and right but not going out and trying to drive any type of organic lead generation yourself then you're doing a, self, a, a massive disservice to your business go out meet people in the community talk to them introduce yourself sell yourself as well as your services okay anybody can go on YouTube and learn how to pressure wash a house what we need to be doing is selling why they should let you be the one to pressure wash their house what is so special about you that you deserve that contract and you deserve their money that's what we want to try to sell is not only our product service but also ourselves and last but not least and this one's important be a sponge but the right kind of sponge okay trust but verify never stop trying to learn training whether you do the paid training some of those are you know I'm, I'm not gonna get into that some are good some are not good I'm not gonna give my opinion on which ones are which go into to training mentorship look for like-minded people try to never be the smartest guy in the room always try to learn from guys who are bigger and more successful than yourself if you surround yourself with guys who are less successful than yourself I'm not saying you can't hang out with those people I'm not saying you can't help those people but if you surround yourself by people who are less successful than you you don't have anyone to mentor you as you're mentoring them so you need to try to not always be the most successful guy in the room try to learn from other people in the industry who are willing to a teach you b teach you properly and c not drain you of your financial accounts to make money for their pockets and give you as little bit of value as they can for what they're they're asking um you know so you want to you want to learn from the right guys be careful to get rich quick schemes starting a business is a very very lucrative thing that you can get into it can become very lucrative but it's gonna take a lot of work you're not gonna start today and be a millionaire by Friday okay it's just not gonna happen you have to put in the work you have to build your company you have to be willing to give it what it needs and feed it to get it where you need to be again read the book profit first implement that into your company but always be looking to learn and avoid I've seen so many guys with this mindset avoid that I have arrived there's nothing else I can learn I know everything there is about pressure washing uh, they call them you know some people call them pressure washing gods on the on Facebook groups avoid that mindset of I know everything and that will help you to continue to grow continue to be successful once you figure that you've arrived and you know everything there is to know there's nothing else to know then you're losing you're, you're already losing because there's the, the industry is always evolving there's always something changing always new challenges on the, the horizon and we need to be ready to face those we're not gonna be ready to face them if we think that we know everything and are the end-all be-all to the pressure washing industry so anyway I'm not gonna continue to, to rant and rave about it I just wanted to give you guys those those keys those tools and of course as always if there's anything that we can do for you here at Blue Line Pressure Washing give us a call 304-886-3182 uh, if you want to check out our equipment Blue Line Pressure Washing and I appreciate your all's time Hope this has helped somebody out there. You've gotten something out of this. We'll talk to you guys soon.